In the first part of this series, we looked at how to produce a public key using the merkel hellman knapsack algorithm. The process began with a special sequence of numbers known as a superincreasing sequence. And through a series of steps, it was transformed into a non-superincreasing sequence that served as our public key. During the process, we also produced three components that must be kept secret from the public, known as the private key. These components consist of the integer m, the inverse of w, and our original superincreasing sequence d. As you'll see in this video, the public key can be used by anyone to encrypt messages into ciphertexts, ensuring that only the intended recipient, who possesses the corresponding private key, can decrypt the ciphertext and read the original message. Before we get started, it's important to note that with the merkel hellman knapsack algorithm, only binary messages can be sent. This means that the message must be composed of binary digits, zeros and ones, for it to work. So suppose Bob wants to send a binary message 0110-1101 privately to Alice. Interestingly, this binary number translates to the decimal number 109 when converted. Remember that Alice possesses both her public and private keys. Here's how Bob would use Alice's public key to encrypt the message, converting it into ciphertext. First of all, notice that Bob's message consists of 8 bits, or has a length of 8 characters, while Alice's public key consists of 4 terms. In such a situation, the length of the message needs to match the number of terms contained in the public key, so Bob's message will need to be broken down into two blocks of four. The first block, which I'll call block one, consists of 0, 1, 1, 0, reading this from left to right, and block two will contain the remaining bits, 1, 1, 0, 1. In case you're curious, if Bob's message had a length of six bits instead of eight, the last block would be incomplete. In such cases, the block would need to be padded with additional zeros to match the length of the public key terms. Let's produce the first ciphertext. I'll call it C1. This is found by taking each bit one at a time and multiplying it to the terms in the public key. So I'll take zero and multiply it to 19. Add to that one times 14 plus one times 23 plus zero times 22. Multiplying and adding those together, we get 37. In the second ciphertext, which I'll call C2, we'll do the same thing. But this time our block consists of one, we'll multiply that to 19, plus one times 14, plus zero times 23, plus one times 22. That amounts to 55. We say our ciphertext consists of 37, and 55. The ciphertext you see in red is the encrypted message. If someone were to try to intercept this, they would have no idea what message Bob is trying to send to Alice. Once Alice receives this encrypted ciphertext from Bob, she needs to decrypt it back. We'll call the decrypted version C prime. And because C consists of two elements, we'll have C prime one and C prime two. To find C prime generally, we take the ciphertext, which I'll call C, and we multiply it to the inverse of W mod M. Remember that the inverse of W and M were part of our private key. We'll have C prime one is equal to 37 times, remember that the inverse of W is 23, mod 29, and again, we repeat this for 55. 37 times 23 makes 851, mod 29. Remember that 351 mod 29 is like saying, what is the remainder of 851 divided by 29? And the remainder, if you do it through long division, will be 10. So we have a remainder of 10. If we do the same thing for the other one, the product of these two is 1,265 mod 29, and the remainder of these two happens to be 18. These two numbers tell us that within Alice's super increasing sequence D, there exists a subset of terms that sum up to 10 and 18. 
Let's take a closer look at Alice's private superincreasing sequence and try to deduce which terms they are. Remember that D contained the terms 2, 3, 7, and 13. It's clear that for 10, if we add 3 and 7, it sums to that value. And similarly for 18, if we add 2, 3, and 13, we get a sum of 18. If I place a 1 over the terms that are part of the sum and zeros over the others, so that's for the first block, and 1, 1, 0, 1 over those terms, we produce the actual message Bob intended on sending Alice before the encryption. Take a look. 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. This means that Alice has successfully decrypted Bob's ciphertext. Now, because Alice's super increasing sequence was so simple, we could do this easily by inspection. However, in practice, this computation would take significantly longer, especially for a human, since D typically consists of at least 100 terms, and each term is much larger in magnitude. Therefore, to perform this calculation more efficiently, when the messages are longer and D is more complex, we use the greedy algorithm, which we've discussed in a previous video as a method for checking whether a super-increasing sequence contains a subset that sums to a given target. Now, if you have any further questions about the encryption or decryption phase of this algorithm, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching.